In the last video, we discussed the OH stretches and showed you that they're very intense and very broad. Now let's answer the question, why are they so broad? So that will be on the next slide there. So this broadening of the peak is due to the fact that the OH bond, or more specifically the hydrogen, okay, what it can do is it can hop around from other molecules. So for example, it can, <clears throat> if we're looking at a carboxylic acid, the hydrogen can hop around to other carboxylic acids, or the hydrogen can hop onto solvent molecules. Now, how can an atom just hop off and onto other molecules? Well, the reason why it can do this is because of the hydrogen bonding network between the solvent and all of the molecules that we, all of the carboxylic acid molecules. So it's because of this hydrogen bonding network that allows these hydrogens to jump around. And so that jumping around makes that signal broad. <clears throat> the next stretch that we're going to look at is the nitrogen-hydrogen stretch. Now the nitrogen-hydrogen stretch can occur on both amines and amides. So if we take a look at the generic structure of a amide, That looks like this. Now let's expand it out here. Okay, so these R's right here that I'm putting in a star. Okay, well, all of them actually, all of the R groups here can be hydrogens as well. Okay, so that is a amide. And then the next one would be an amine. Okay. So what we are going to take a look at is looking at amines and amides that have some hydrogens there. And we're going to take a look at that stretch right there, that nitrogen-hydrogen bond stretch on an amide versus a nitrogen-hydrogen stretch on an amine. So we come back here, both amides or amines, the stretches are going to be around 3,300 to 3,500 inverse centimeters. So this in peak right here is coming from this nitrogen hydrogen stretch. So what we have here is a amide and that nitrogen hydrogen gives us this stretch right here. Now nitrogen hydrogen stretches you can see are less intense than the OH stretch and it's not as broad as the OH stretch. And these two differences between the OH and the NH stretches is due to the fact that the nitrogen-hydrogen bond here in the amide is less polar than the OH bond in alcohols and carboxylic acids. And the hydrogen bonding network in amides and amines are weaker than alcohols and carboxylic acids. So there's going to be less of this hydrogen hopping around. So the peak is going to be sharper. Now look at this amide right here. Now there are two hydrogens. And look at what we see. We see two peaks. So if we see one peak here in this region, versus two, 
then that's going to be indicative of how many hydrogens we have on the nitrogen amine or the sorry the nitrogen atom now i want to make this point very very clear that when we're comparing this molecule and this molecule and we're looking at the signal here we see two hydrogens two signals one hydrogen one signal but this signal at this region right here i'm just right here okay i'm not worried about any of this over here if i changed and got rid of the carbonyl carbon and oxygen and now we just have the amine now this has been turned into an amine if we have an amine we will have the same signal Okay, so this signal right here does not tell us if we have an amide or an amine. It tells us how many hydrogens are potentially attached to a nitrogen atom. So the same thing with this problem. Ignore everything over here. Okay? We're just focusing our attention here. If I got rid of that carbonyl oxygen right there, we would now have an amine. And that amine would give us two signals. Now it's very tempting to say two signals are because there are two hydrogens. That is not the case. Okay, that is not true. The reason why we have two signals okay, is because we can have two different vibrational modes happening at the same time. We could have 50% of this molecule doing a symmetrical stretch, and then the other 50% of the molecules doing an asymmetrical stretch. It is the vibrational modes, the different vibrational modes that are giving us the two signals not the two protons or the two hydrogens, okay? So I oftentimes use hydrogens and protons interchangeably. So that's what I mean if, if I've confused anyone about that. Protons and hydrogens are the same thing. Okay, so let's continue looking out here. So we already discussed that. Now look at this amide. What do we see? There's no signal around here. And why do we see no signal? Because there's no hydrogens attached on that nitrogen. Okay. And the same thing would happen. We would have no signal if this carbonyl was gone. Now we would have an amine and there would be no signal there. And that makes sense because there's no hydrogens attached to the nitrogen atom. Okay. So that's what this little bullet point right here is saying. Okay. It's saying if basically if there's no hydrogens attached to the nitrogen atoms, you're not going to have any stretches. Okay. Let's see, and here's the uh, the three examples that I looked at all on the same slide, just so you can compare and contrast. But uh, I want to highlight again that you can make the same comparison if you were considering these molecules to be amines. Okay. This part would change. If we look compare an amine and an amide, yes, that is true. I am just talking about this region right there. That will stay the same. All right.